Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from WallStreetMojo.com. This is part 12 of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about accounts payables turnover ratio. In simple terms, accounts payables turnover ratio measures how frequently a business pays to its suppliers. In this tutorial, we basically have four objectives. Number one, understand what accounts payables turnover is. Number two, what's its calculations and formulas. Number three is calculate accounts payables turnover for Colgate case study. And number four, it's interpretations, right? So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder yet again. We'll be needing the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the description link below. Also to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel that is Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is Accounts Payables Turnover Ratio? Accounts Payables Turnover Ratio is a part of the Ratio Analysis Framework and it comes under the category of Turnover Ratios. Now, uh, we've learned about Receivables Turnover Ratio, Inventory Turnover Ratio, and uh, now we will look at what this is all about. So for understanding what this is, uh, Accounts Payable Turnover, we will need to understand first what Accounts Payable is as such. Accounts Payable primarily means that uh, the payables that are due to the uh, suppliers. So as a company, when you buy lots of uh, raw materials or inventory, uh, obviously that uh, uh, buying process might involve either uh, payment in cash or payment in credit, right? So when the payment in cash happens, there is nothing called accounts payable because there is nothing that is due. But when uh, the payment is on credit uh, from the suppliers, uh, you uh, actually record this on the balance sheet as accounts payables. So uh, when we talk about accounts payables turnover, we say that how many times during a year you are kind of settling your bills for the suppliers of the supplier. Are you doing it two times or three times during the year? So out of the total purchase of, let's say, uh, $3,000. So when we say uh, accounts payables turnover ratio, we essentially uh, uh, mean that how many times the company is uh, paying or settling off its uh, credit bills of the suppliers. It was it two times, three times? So at the end of the day, suppliers need to be paid, right? So how many times the company is doing that? We get that uh, estimate on an average from accounts payables turnover ratio. So now let's look at uh, the formula for accounts payables turnover ratio. For doing that, we basically require two things. We require the purchases and we require the average receivables. So average uh, payables, sorry, average accounts payables. Now, what are the purchases? Purchases are basically the purchases which the company has done. So uh, as I said earlier, uh, the company will need to source its raw material from somewhere, right? From its supply. We call all of that as purchases. Obviously purchases can be on, on the basis of cash or in credit. So we are assuming that uh, the purchases which we talk about here are the credit purchases. So that's one thing we are looking at. And second is the accounts payable. So where do we find the accounts payables entry? Uh, the accounts payables entry is found in the balance sheet. Okay, so we take the average because this is the balance sheet number. So at the start of the year, the balance sheet would give you an accounts payable number. And at the end of the year, you will have a snapshot of what the account payable number is. You take an average so that, you know, there is no uh, seasonality or, uh, you know, you don't uh, put a specific number to it. The second term that is here in the formula is the average uh, accounts payable. So average accounts payable essentially means that uh, you are taking the accounts payables of the start of the year and then at the end of the year. Okay. And then you are dividing that by two. Why do you take the average accounts payable and not the accounts payable at the end of the year or the beginning of the year the answer lies in you know uh, how the balance sheet is formed balance sheet actually gives us a single snapshot so you will have a start of the year balance sheet and at the end of the year balance sheet. on one side we have purchases which is which happens during the year right so during the year means the full year 
but on the uh, other side when we talk about the balance sheet it's a single snapshot so we just know the start and the end we don't know what happened in the middle or in between we usually take the average so as to smoothen this out maybe the ending accounts payable would be very less so maybe the starting would be very less the average will actually average out the whole uh, you know boundary conditions so that's why we take the average accounts payables and uh, it is found in the current liabilities section on the balance sheet that's the formula you might be wondering that where will we get the purchases number right uh, purchases is not directly given in the income statement so if you look at the income statement of colgate i'll just show you we have the cost of sales and then we have selling general admin expenses and other kind of expenses but we don't have this number called as purchases where does the purchases number actually come from it has to be found out it is not directly available on the balance sheet or the income statement you have to find out as an analyst so let's let's do that i'll tell you what the formula is for the purchases first thing you remember this equation this is called as a base equation this is called as a base equation i'll come to what this means now base means beginning inventory plus your addition to inventory is equal to your cost of goods sold plus the ending inventory if you look at this formula closely i'm saying base b is the beginning inventory so what you start during the year in terms of inventory second is addition to inventory whatever you purchase this is where the purchases is coming from addition to inventory so during the year you would add on to the inventory by making purchases from the suppliers and from that inventory so this is equal to so from that inventory you will sell a part of it right as cost of goods sold so cogs cost of goods sold okay so s comes from here cost of goods sold and the last one is the whatever is left over will be the ending inventory i hope this equation is pretty easy and clear beginning plus addition during the year should be equal to whatever you have sold in terms of inventory plus the ending right this addition to inventory is nothing but purchases okay just remember this this is addition to inventory is the purchases by just rearranging the formula above we can find the purchases so let's let's do that let's rearrange the formula quickly i'll do that addition to inventory is equal to or, or I, i'll also put a bracket here so that there is no confusion so addition to inventory or purchases is equal to cost of goods sold plus ending inventory minus the beginning inventory okay in order to calculate the accounts payables turnover you require the purchases purchases can be found using this formula and the average accounts payables number will be sourced from the balance sheet i hope this is uh, clear now so let's take an example to understand this in more detail here is a short example and uh, we will try to calculate the accounts payables turnover so just remember the base equation because we'll be applying that as well cost of goods sold given here is 60000 beginning inventory is a uh, 40000 ending inventory is 25000 an accounts payable at the start the beginning is 10000 and accounts payable at the end of the year is 20000 so uh, we have actually all the data that is required to calculate the accounts payables turnover ratio first thing is we will calculate the purchases okay so we'll use this equation purchases purchases will be equal to cost of goods sold plus ending inventory minus the beginning inventory so purchases this is equal to cost of goods sold that is 60000 plus the ending inventory okay so that's 25000 minus beginning inventory so this comes out to be how much that is 45000 as the total amount of purchases done during the year now the formula says that uh, we have to divide the purchases by average accounts payables okay so here we have the start as 10000 ending as 20000 so we need to find the average accounts payables so this will be the average of the two so i'm using the formula average to calculate the average payables and this comes out to be 15000 okay so uh, let me put this here so we have average accounts payables as 15000 so what will be the accounts payables turnover 
so this is basically nothing but purchases divided by your average accounts payables that comes out to be three the calculation is fairly simple usually you get everything from the balance sheet this is given in the balance sheet here you have this in the income statement this is again in the current liability side of the balance sheet so pretty much all the data is readily available in the financial statements how do you interpret this accounts payables turnover of three times uh, basically it means that on an average the company is paying accounts payables of 15000 they they are settling off the bills to an extent of 15000 thrice a year so that basically is the literal interpretation of accounts payables of the with this let's move on and uh, calculate the accounts payables turnover for colgate here is the balance sheet of Coolgate and I want you to scroll down to row number row number 109. This is where we will calculate the payables turnover ratio. You remember the payables turnover ratio formula that is purchases divided by your average accounts payables. For calculating purchases, there was another formula we used. I'll just copy and paste the formula in this sheet as well so that it becomes easier purchases was equal to cost of goods sold plus the ending inventory minus the beginning inventory okay uh, we require the ending and the beginning inventory both so because of that we cannot start from the year of december 2016 we cannot do that because we do not have the beginning inventory for 2016 the beginning inventory for 2016 will be the ending inventory of 2015 that data we didn't have it as of now we don't have it so we are not starting from here we'll start from the 2017 december 2017 okay the cost of goods sold is uh, basically here as well we have already linked it from our earlier calculations this will be equal to purchases equal to cost of goods sold plus the ending inventory ending inventory is what we have in terms of inventory for december 2017 and you need to minus the beginning inventory so this is 1171 remember that the ending inventory of 2016 will be the beginning inventory of 2017 okay so that's how it works so we get the purchases so i'll press enter and what we get here is 6224 as the purchases so i'll copy and paste this formula across to calculate the purchases for all the future years okay all the years from 2017 to 2020 okay so having calculated the, the purchases number the first part is done the numerator is taken care of uh, the denominator is nothing but the average payables right average accounts payable so where is the average accounts payables found on the balance sheet you have to actually go to the current liabilities section and this is where the average accounts payable numbers will be found uh, the average for december 2017 will be 1124 plus 1212 divided by 2 so the average of these two will be used here okay so let's do that and uh, calculate the payables turnover ratio now payables turnover ratio is purchases divided by your average accounts payables right so i'll scroll up and choose the average of this two okay so i'll close the bracket as well and what do we find is that the payables turnover ratio comes out to be 5.33 okay and uh, let's let's copy and paste this formula and then we can discuss uh, what it means this is 5.21 so what we see is that uh, in the year of 2017 the payables turnover ratio was 5.33 and now it has it's actually pretty steady if you look at it has become 5.12 now but there's a slight decrease but not much to an extent like the way you know uh, the other turnover ratios decreased or increased right so when you look at the inventory turnover ratio it, it decreased from 5.16 to 4.20 and the receivables turnover ratio increased uh, from 10.69 to 12.18 but there's not much of substantial increase or decrease here right so this means that uh, payment period for uh, of colgate to its suppliers has been pretty much steady uh, they pay usually five times during the year so accounts payables whatever the amount is is settled 5.12 times during the year that's the overall interpretation of uh, the accounts payables turnover ratio 
I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section. Also, we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications about our latest video as soon as we release one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.